out to. He's now under three minutes, and it will be a complex battle. He has great compensation for the knight. If he goes knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, bishop takes d5 check, knight f3 only move, and it's a very unclear position. Both sides have great chances. I like Black's position. He's active. The king on h1 is very weak. This bishop is the single best piece on the board, but taking all this time right now for a very obvious sacrifice when you have to win doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever. Yes, he's, he's dwindling down those two minutes. I mean, he's reaching two minutes now. I think that's a bit too much time to make such a, you know, yes, it's a big position. It's a critical position. But when you're such a strong grandmaster, I would, I'd guess that these things are pretty intuitive. Yeah, definitely intuitive, but maybe he's found something else that we're not seeing. If we go back to the game position, instead of this knight sacrifice on d5, maybe he's just trying to go c4, and if the bishop retreats, let's say, to c2, then the queen comes up he's to c5. He's played knight d5, I think. Yeah, he has. Yes, so he, he, has. he has gone with the sacrifice. Knight takes d5, pawn takes, bishop takes. And, you know, he really took way too much time. This is he pretty did. obvious. Knight f3 played instantly. And... It's very complex, but now pieces are being traded off, and if Wesley So can keep his king safe, well, he's up a, a, a knight over here, and it looks like he's going to win. Lawrence, what does the machine say? Well, we had uh, some more moves quickly there. Rook takes e1, queen takes e1, queen f4. So the queen now in the heart of the action, getting busy with the other boys. And I'll tell you what, this is extremely difficult to play for white. The machines love these positions. They can find the only moves. But it's white the one who has to do that. And you're human. You've got six minutes left. You try and tell me a move that looks really good here for white. I'm struggling to find one. Your, Black's plan is easy. All he's going to... He's threatening bishop takes f3. Let's address that first. How are we going to defend that knight? Can if, white play queen g3? Yeah, you can play queen g3. But then what are you going to do against queen to e3? This is the problem. Suddenly I'm now hitting this bishop. I may maintain all of the pressure. I'm ready to bring my C pawn down the board. My rook's coming into the game via E8. And you're not out of the pin. You're pinned up. You're tied up. And this is why I, I wish he would have just played this two minutes ago. Because then he would have, I think it would have been a really interesting battle. With 1 minute 47, yeah, he should have gone with his gut. A bit like in poker, sometimes you go with your gut, you go with your instinct. In chess, it's the same. Knight takes d5, it was the gut move. He saw it, but he dwindled, and he's going to have to play amazingly if he's going to uh, still win this game. Well, let's say that they go for this variation. Let's say white just plays bishop b1 here. How would black continue the pressure? Yeah, I suppose you just move your rook into the game, rook e8, and say, hey, it's back to you, white. What are you doing? Right, so you're saying that Wesley's pieces are a little bit tied up for now. Well, they're totally tied up, aren't they? I mean, look at the knight. It can't move. You can't move the rook. You can't move the bishop. You've got this c-pawn to worry about. Yep. I think this might even be full compensation. Wow, what a turn of events we have here. If Zhao Jinxiao manages to win this, we will go into another tiebreak with five-minute games. Very exciting. Of course, that's what we want, but Wesley So is hoping to secure a draw. Robert, what do you play us through the emotions that he's feeling right now? Well, Wesley just made his move king to g2, a move that I find very scary. The king now is into the action, protecting knight on f3. But if this queen on e1 is distracted, let's just throw in some random moves like h6 and queen out to c3. Well, the queen g4 check is incredibly powerful. It makes sure that you win this knight on f3 because two pieces will attack and the king gets nowhere to go to defend it. So white has to now be very vigilant of this idea of queen g4 check. But I agree with Lawrence. Black could not afford to spend so much time on that knight sacrifice. If he had made that move instantly, then perhaps the time of the clock would, would have been switched sides. And he's still thinking, you he, know, he's going down in one minute now. He's going down to one minute and he... He had the opportunity, wow, g5, what a move. Look at this, pawn to g4 is a huge threat. And if pawn takes g6, well, perhaps he can now take with his pawn. And as we see, the rook comes in the action. The pressure on f3 is quite intense. Definitely very enterprising play by the Chinese Grandmaster Lawrence. He's got a minute 10, but I tell you what, he's got a heart of gold, this guy. G5 is a brilliant move, the top move suggested by the machines, and an unexpected one. You never really see those kind of moves coming, even if you're Wesley So. And now he's got a real decision to make. He's got a lot of pressure on this knight. I don't know how Wesley's going to react after G5, but it's a great move given the situation. It was his only try. And uh, if you're Wesley, you're going to spend a couple of minutes here because, you know, if you take this pawn off, allow this O file to open up, you might end up losing the game. So you, have, you actually have to calculate. I reckon he's going to get down below, below three minutes. He's going to spend at least one minute on this move because 
F takes G6 is the critical decision of the game. And I would guess that the statistics there that we see on screen, 85% winning chances for white. The machine is giving this simply because of the material imbalance here, but practically playing with you know, three, one, three minutes, one minute on the clock. This is extremely difficult for White to play, isn't it, Robert? Oh, it definitely is. And after Zhao ja, ja missed his chance with Queen D6 earlier, he's really fought well. It's very nerve-wracking position to have. The king is unsafe. And if you look, with every move being made, the advantage is getting smaller That's and right. smaller. And he's moving, he's retreating his pieces, bishop e2. If I'm black, rook f5 looks incredibly powerful. Rook f5, if queen g3, you hit him with rook to g5. The knight is pinned. If wow. you take with the rook, simply queen takes g5 would be game over. So this is getting exciting. But instead, after bishop e2, he decided to go g5. Well, he went it once before, why not again? And after g4 is the crucial threat, it looks very difficult for white here, and he's losing time, but again, it's very unclear position. Yes, let's see if this Wesley So can keep it together. I think he can, but with those times looking the way it is, it's getting increasingly hard. I think there have been some inaccuracies here on behalf of Zhao because the statistics have just gone up for Wesley. Over to you, Lawrence. Yeah, unfortunately for Wesley, it looks as though, uh, rather, not unfortunately for Wesley, fortunately for Wesley, unfortunately for Zhao, looks as though he's gone a bit wrong. It was tough to make the real uh, precise moves with such few tight. He's got 45 seconds left. He's got G4 on the board. Check is on the board. He has to move the king. I don't know what he's waiting for. Come on. He's got, he's got 38 seconds. What's he waiting for? Check is on the board. I don't understand why he's no, I think he recognized that he's now completely lost. The idea is that the king right. g8, simply knight e5, there's no longer this pin on right. this diagonal. Yep. And once I trade rooks, it's end of story. You don't have enough pieces to attack me. I'm up a minor piece. That yep. would spell game over. And it just goes back to that move when he spent so many minutes yep. for a very obvious sacrifice, and he wasted precious time. The clock situation could have been reversed if he'd made that move much sooner. Yep. No, 14 seconds left. That's 14 uh, seconds, and Wesley will definitely see knight e5. I think we're going to see a shake of hands very soon. Come on, Wesley. We are waiting for this move, knight e5, because you know what? If he doesn't, who well, knows what could happen? But with 14 seconds on the clock, really, I, I don't think that Zhao has much of a chance here. And he played knight e5, which is just the move that That's right. shuts down all of Black's hope. The rook on f8 will be traded. You can't stop it because your queen's under attack. The queen is nowhere good to go. And he's going to lose on time, I think. You know, he's thinking about the position. He realized he's lost. And three, two, one. Oh, here he resigned. In the first game was very easy. That game was incredibly difficult. It was very nervous, very tense. And look at Wesley. He's very relieved right now because he knew at some point he was in danger. He just kind of, look at his face, he's smiling. He understands that if Zhao had just found a few more accurate moves, well, Wesley could have been in danger. And look at him. He's getting the support from his teammates from Webster, his coach, Susan Polgar. And everyone is kind of rooting for Wesley. And he just, he looks a lot more relaxed. But now the battle ensues. He's playing his very good friend, the very strong Grandmaster Ray Robson. And that's going to be a battle of ep epic proportions. And as we see on the screen there, former world champion Grandmaster Susan Polgar must be extremely satisfied. Two of her students into the finals of the Millionaire Chess Open. Lawrence, any thoughts? Well, yeah, I mean, Wesley, we, we saw again how all chess players are human. He played this move, queen c4, he started to lose the plot a bit, but he showed his class, stayed calm, Zhao missed his chance, and he went through. So uh, it's great news for Wesley, great news for Webster as well. I mean, we got two guys studying at the university uh, in the final of this prestigious tournament. So uh, Susan's going to be delighted, speaks volumes about their training program, and look at him there approaching his colleague. Ray's actually come out, I suppose, to support him very much. Maurice Ashley, the tournament director there. <coughs> His opponent in the next round, Ray, who we obviously spoke to earlier, and I believe he's well, going to be coming. He's on his way to talk to us. We are very excited to see him. The two finalists, as we can see there in the camera. Now, Lawrence, take us through what's going to happen at, in the finals while we get set up here with Wesley. Well, the finals, we've got it clear. Wesley So versus Ray Robson. They are going to be fighting it out in just a short while. They're going to be playing the same format as we saw at the beginning of these semi-finals. They start with a 25-minute game. If that is tied after two games, obviously they have white and black each. They play what we just saw, a 15-minute game, and the coverage will begin 
at around 4.30. I can't wait. It's going to be great. Both of these guys, well, they deserve a lot of credit, don't they? Wesley for showing his class. Never been in real danger in the tournament, but Ray also for showing that he's a fighter. And you've got to fight to get to the final. Sometimes you can't always have it your way. And uh, it's going to be a really interesting uh, mix of styles, actually. Ray, very aggressive player, very tactical. Wesley, we've seen, he likes to eke out these small advantages. So clash of styles, clash of personalities. Can't wait. Lawrence, we are here with the finalist, mm -hmm. Grandmaster Finalist's Wesley So from the Philippines. You, you seem to have just sailed through that match. Take us through it. Uh, with my match against Oh Jan Chao. Wait, yeah, well, I realized that he had a higher rapid feeder rating than me. <laughs> 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 I looked this morning, he had a bit higher. So I was um, trying to just play solid. Obviously, this is a knockout match, so my main goal is not to lose any games. Mm -hmm. which, can, yeah. which is a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's, that's what we were saying. We are saying, I don't think Wesley So is going to you know, go for it gung-ho because he's just going to solid position with black, press with white. Yeah, exactly. And uh, just taking, just getting the chances that my, what my opponent gives me, even if I'm black. But my main concern is just to avoid losing and just to play uh, solid chess. Well, it's definitely worked for you. And I remember having in you here, here yesterday and you said, I don't want any Chinese players in the final. Well, <laughs> two of them are, have gone, so you must be ecstatic. And you're playing your friend in the final in, in yeah, just a, a few hours. How are you feeling about playing him? Well, excited. I'm also very happy that uh, we both reached the finals. He's my teammate and uh, we're close friends. We've been rooming together for two years until recently. And um, I really look forward to playing against him. Uh, obviously, it would be a tough match, but I'm just glad that I reached the finals. And um, there were some nerving moments on my last game, but I eventually managed Yes, to I believe too. Robert has some insight into that. He's got a few questions for you. Yeah, yeah. Wesley, well, yeah, firstly, really congratulations on the fantastic performance. Thank and, you, Robert. You know, your first game was just a complete masterpiece. You crushed him. It was very straightforward. But your second game was far more complex. He sacrificed the pawn in the position that I have on the board here. Well, I thought black had good chances. Did you yeah. see this move queen to d6 here? Yeah, I, I saw queen d6. I was going to play knight f3. So knight f3, and what do you think? Well, your pawn on f4 is under attack. He can yeah, sacrifice he can his knight on d5. d5. It's, it's a very complex position. Were it's, you nervous? It's a very complex. Yeah, I was nervous, I had to admit. But at the same time, um, I won the first game. So I'm glad that even if I lose this game, I will still reach the blitz playoffs. So. Obviously, it's a very complicated position. He had black, and he has absolutely has to win. So he has to go all out, which he did. And fortunately for me, he got low on time. That's right. He, he, you seem to be playing a lot quicker and obviously very, very sharp these days. Now tell us, uh, before you go get you, catch your breath and take some rest before the finals, what is going to be your strategy? Obviously, you can't tell me exactly, but <laughs> what is your approach? Ray. Well, I know him very well, and uh, actually one of our one of my main preparations for this tournament has been, has been uh, to working with him and playing this game. Sure. And you've both made it to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, I, it wasn't, I wasn't expecting it. I mean, obviously, it's a very tough event and one more match left. But uh, for the match today, um, or the finals, I guess the spectators could expect uh, um, exciting games. Well, and obviously, my main goal is to avoid losing. Well, you, I hope that you, you know, you prepare yourself before the finals, avoid losing. We are expecting fireworks from you. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Grandmaster Wesley So we'll from the Philippines.